Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you very much for the privilege to be called workers and leaders in the church of the living God. We know it's a great responsibility and we are praying that you help us to measure up to the responsibility you have given us in Jesus' name. And the power we need, you give to everyone, brothers and sisters, in Jesus' name. We are praying, O oh Lord, that all we need to do everything you want us to do in your kingdom will do effectively. We pray that the hand of the Lord will be mighty on everyone. And our various places of ministration, the people will see your power upon your people in Jesus' name. Speak to us as we briefly look at the scripture now, so that we'll grow in the Lord and we'll profit the people of God more in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Isaiah chapter 50, we're looking at verse 4. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4. The Lord has given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakeneth morning by morning, he wakeneth mine ear to hear as the learned. Please turn to the New Testament in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, looking at verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. You'll find in the two references I've read to you. First of all, it talks about the tongue of the learned. And then in the New Testament, it talks about building as a wise master builder. Bringing those two things together. I'm talking to you tonight very briefly on building with the tongue. Building with the tongue. We're building the church. And you are building your family too. And you are building your personal life. And you are building and edifying believers. And you are helping to grow, to increase in knowledge, to increase in wisdom, to increase in the love of God. All the people you have relationship, interaction with. If we are going to encourage and edify and build up the personal lives of the people around us. As well as the church of the living God. There is a part of us that does much of the work. And that is our tongue. As you think about a lot of things we do in the church, you'll find that a lot relates with the way we use our tongue. And that's why you want to concentrate on this part of the gift that God has given you. A small part, a small member indeed, and yet it has great, great possibilities. We're told in Proverbs chapter 24, please turn to that place, Proverbs chapter 24. There in verse uh, 3, it says, Through wisdom is an house builded, and by understanding it is established. You may take it as a personal house, a personal home that you are building. It is through wisdom, and through the understanding and the knowledge you have, you build your home. We've been talking about marriage for some Mondays now, and you will see that a lot goes into building that home with your tongue. The husband, the wife, even the children included too. And as we think about the household of faith and the house of God, we build too with the tongue. It's not just uh, the man, uh, the woman as well. In Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1, Every wise woman buildeth her house. Uh, many times uh, you need to realize that this is my home. This is my house. And whatever other people do to try to destroy that house, demolish that house, you as a Christian wife, a Christian woman, there is something you can do by the help of God to build that house yourself. If others are pulling down, then you have to be wise that you don't join them in pulling down your own home, pulling down your own, uh, kind, your own family, 
uh, the same thing with the church of the living God. Uh, we know that uh, the church has uh, enemies outside. Satan does not like the church. The demons obviously do not like the church and agents of Satan do not like the church. If there are so many forces outside the church, outside the household of faith, trying to destroy the church, we who are members of the body and we who are ministers in the church of the living God, we shouldn't join our enemies to destroy the house where we are. If they try to destroy, we construct, we edify, we build up, we help. We lift up the people of God. And that we can do a lot with our tongue. In Proverbs chapter 34. Proverbs chapter 34. Reading from verse 12. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking girl. Uh, you see there that uh, the tongue plays a major role. And the, the, the book of the Proverbs uh, talk about it a lot. It talks about uh, the way we use our tongue. talks about the power of the tongue. talks about the times uh, it will be best for us to be quiet. And it talks about how we even answer questions. talks about a lot of things that actually help us as we're learning on how to build our lives, how to build the lives of other people, how to build our families, and how to build the church of the living God. Let's look at a few uh, verses in the Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 7. For my mouth shall speak truth. Wickedness is an abomination to my lips. It's like he has gone into consecration, a dedication of his tongue. It says, this small member... For the rest of my life. I want the rest of my life to be the best of my life. Not looking at what is past. How he had used the tongue in the past. He says, there's a new consecration. There's a new dedication. And that new consecration dedication is that the rest of my life to be the best of my life. I'm going to make sure that I speak the truth. And I speak that truth in love. And then wickedness will be an abomination to my lips. He's saying, I'm going to think before I speak. I'm going to think, how is this going to affect my brother? How will it affect my sister? How will it build up and construct the household of faith? And if I see that it will be the way of wickedness, of division, of discord, of destruction, then that's going to be foreign to my mouth. That will be an abomination to my mouth. It will be something strange to my mouth that I'll not get involved with. I'm sure you know Proverbs chapter 11. Verse 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. He that winneth souls is wise. We are evangelizing. We are uh, teaching other people. We are encouraging them to know the Lord. We do that by winning souls. And if we are going to win souls, the way we use our tongue, we are going to be very, very wise. We're going to be very thoughtful, very careful, very deliberate, very considerate in the way we use our tongue. In Proverbs chapter 15, reading from verse 1, the first part of verse 1 is soft answer, turn it away, wrath. That's how we build. Our teacher, while uh, teaching, uh, said that some of us in our district have lost some members. Uh, sometimes uh, even those members that are lost, we can win them back, bring them back by soft tongue. A kind of tongue that is so soft and so sympathetic, it will even break bones. In verse uh, 2, it says, the tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright. It's saying it's not enough to have knowledge. We may not use knowledge the way we ought to use knowledge to build up, to encourage, and to edify the body. It is when we are wise, we use that knowledge aright. In verse 4, a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. That is, they will bring life to the people we're ministering to, we're speaking to. That same chapter in verse 30. A chapter 15 of Proverbs, verse 30. The light of the eyes rejoices the heart. And here it is. And a good report maketh the bones fat. Uh, you know, sometimes you can even have uh, the facts in your hand. Like the ten spies that came from the land of Canaan. But the way they used uh, what they had observed and what they had seen in the land of Canaan, it resulted in evil report. Although they were really not telling a lie, 
and their conscience couldn't condemn them that they were telling a lie but actually the way they presented the facts discouraged people whatever knowledge we have we shouldn't present our knowledge our facts to discourage anyone in proverbs chapter 16 verse 21 proverbs 16 21 the wise in heart shall be called prudent and the sweetness with well, the sweetness of the leaves increases learning we even make people eager to learn and they want and they are running to the study they are running to the revival time because they know i'm going to get a word of encouragement and i'm going to learn something because i know that our leader in our local church he always brings us something uh, to comfort people to encourage people to edify people and even when he is warning people he wants you you know that he's doing it out of love in proverbs chapter 31 proverbs cha chapter 31 verse 8 open thy mouth for the dumb in the cause of all such that has appointed to destruction if uh, you find that uh, people are being destroyed or they are being punished or they are being ill-treated or they are being oppressed and you want you are there and you want to say something remember now that you have to use your tongue to build up therefore you open your mouth for the dumb the fellow is guilty the fellow is dumb or the fellow may not be guilty but he doesn't have the knowledge the wisdom the power to defend himself and here you are you are the one to open your mouth for the dumb in verse 9 open thy mouth judge righteously and please the cause of the poor and needy they're not able to defend themselves because they're poor you're able to do it because you are opening your mouth for them as we think about what we do with our tongue in relation to the work of the lord think about it number one we pray we intercede and if we could spend much of our time interceding for people praying for people holding on to the promises of god you've had something negative about your brother about your sister make it a subject of prayer number two we witness we testify uh, make it a point of duty you want to use your tongue in a positive way you are witnessing to people that have not known the lord you are testifying number three you can preach the word of god you preach it outside you preach it inside the church too number four you teach you instruct you're enlightening people the people that do not have knowledge you're enlightening them number five you counsel you give advice to people and your counseling is very positive and is a result oriented and the people you counseled before they are telling other people why don't you go to our coordinator why don't you go to our zona leader why don't you go to our women leader because uh, the last time i went to him the last time uh, i went to her i was grateful to god i got to her you encourage people number six uh, the people that are downtrodden and discouraged and they feel i cannot take another step again my problems are too many for me you have a word of encouragement for them number seven you admonish them you advise them you tell them the way they ought to go and of course there are times you want to warn them but you warn them you are correcting them in love you're not beating them down smashing them crushing them you want them correcting them in love and then you challenge uh, young people they um, actually you challenge them especially those uh, young people uh, because uh, you know the uh, so way young people think they think in one direction we don't have this opportunity we don't have that opportunity and they will not know that whatever we're doing is for their good and then you bring challenges to them tell them good stories so that will make them feel this is not the end of the road and you challenge them to rise up and move on and then you bless God you praise God you glorify God and then uh, among among us uh, workers under us they've done something commendable you commend them you appreciate them and if there are things uh, you feel they have not done well uh, there are times you may want to just turn a blind eye a deaf ear overlook uh, some of those things and when they do something good that need praise commendation appreciation you praise them and then uh, um, maybe you if you are numbering keep on numbering i've lost the number myself you comfort uh, those uh, who are in trouble uh, they find themselves uh, in trouble and then you comfort them you communicate that's another thing you communicate the love of god to them do they feel i'm useless i'm like a prodigal son i've gone too far 
I'm not in the far country. My life can never amount to anything anymore. You communicate the love of God to them. You tell them it's not so bad that the Lord cannot take you up and remodel your life and renew your life. Better days are still coming. You, you communicate the love of God to them. And then they, I read a, a, a reference to you in Proverbs chapter 31. You defend the weak defend the weak and you strengthen the believers if we're going to be able to do all this with our tongue it's going to take a love it's going to take a deliberate effort to do that uh, because we might have been used in the past uh, to not really encouraging people now we have to take deliberate effort and uh, make deliberate uh, effort to actually do it in uh, colossians chapter 4 colossians chapter 4 Verses 5 and 6. Walk in wisdom towards them that are without, redeeming the time. If we are to walk in wisdom towards them that are outside, how much more the people that are inside? Those who are inside, those of us who are relating together. We shouldn't take one another for granted. If the people outside, if they need encouragement, we need encouragement too. If the people outside, if they need our love, our sympathy, those who are inside, they need our love too, our sympathy. Therefore, walk in wisdom towards them, even those that are inside you. In verse 6, let your speech be always with grace. Always with grace. If you get angry, it's likely the word of grace may not come out. If you get irritated, it's likely the word of grace may not come out. If you forget yourself that here you are, everything you say is to build up people. The word may not come out with grace, but cool down. Be deliberate. Be slow. Be patient. Think it through. Think it over. Put yourself in the place of the person that has done something you don't appreciate. Maybe he's ignorant. Maybe he doesn't know what he's doing. And as you cool down and you are deliberate in what you want to say, then the word that comes out of you, your speech will always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. May the Lord give us the grace in Jesus' name. And in Proverbs chapter uh, 26, verse, chapter 31, verse 26, she openeth her mouth, how? I said how? With wisdom, she in particular, in your home. You know, your husband has said something. I've told him not to be talking like that. I've told him that thing irritates me. I don't want that. I don't like that. Don't talk yet. Swallow that thing. And if, she, if he has done wrong and said wrong, two wrongs will not make a right. You open your mouth with wisdom. And in our tongue is the law of kindness. I pray the Lord will do it for us. We can build together. Paul the Apostle said, as a wise master builder, he has laid the foundation. All of us that are building now, we need the wisdom of God. And this instrument, this part of us, our tongue, is very, very essential in helping us to build according to pattern. Let's rise up and pray that the Lord will help us. That through our tongue, we will build and we will build a strong church. A good church. A stable church. A powerful church. Be an encouragement. Appreciate the workers that are working along with you. Speak with grace. Speak with grace. Cool down. Be slow. Speak words that after the people have left you, they will say, I'm very, I, will, I was really happy that you know, I went to brother so-and-so. I got to sister so-and-so. What an encouragement I received from him. Let's build with our tongue, with love, 